Hello and welcome back to The Colony with Man of the Ant. So today we're going to take a little look at Project Cars 3. Now, as you can see, I'm currently sat on the track, ready to go. The reasons for this is because I've had some issues. So before we get into the game at all and other potential issues with the game uh, as, as a sequel to Project Cars and Project Cars 2, the issues I had is that my controller wasn't working. It worked in the menus, so I could control this menu fine with the controller, but as soon as I tried to race, none of the inputs were recognized. So I wanted to bring this up just in case anyone else had this issue. So at first I thought it was to do with the fact I was running in VR, so I tried it in standard pancake desktop mode, that didn't work. I tried unplugging all my joysticks and pedals that got installed for Flight Simulator, that didn't make any difference. I eventually found someone on the Steam forums for Project Cars 2 complaining about the same problem. And so if you have that issue where you can't control any vehicle but you can control the menus what you need to do is go into settings and into button assignments and in here you need to reset every button every every control needs to be reset to exactly the same control so you know change that to right trigger is already at right trigger it's something to do with the fact that my con xbox controller is detected as controller one rather than controller zero and the game's expecting it to be controller zero, so it doesn't accept the inputs in-game, even though it accepts them during the menus. So it's very weird, it's very confusing. Uh, the game has quite a long load time to get into this particular race. This race is like a tutorial race. So I've gone through and set up an avatar, and I've set up some um, the assist options. So I've gone for, I think we can see it in here, can't we? Uh, so I've gone for experience, and most of the assists are off, so we've got anti-lock brakes on, we've got low traction control, that's about it, that's fine. Um, and then it just dumps you straight into this race, and this race takes minutes to load, and I've had to load this like eight times now, so I've only got about 20 minutes to actually show you this, because it's taken me so long to get it working in the first place. So let's just hit resume, let's just start the race, and let's just see how we go. So I've now got some throttle, which is good, excellent. Let's change our view so we are actually in car. Beautiful. And I think there is also, there's like a helmet cam. So you get this, it's exactly the same view, but it's just dirty. It's just dirty now. We can change it while that menu's there, which is useful. So we'll stick with the standard in-game one, I think. It, it's having an issue seeing at least one of my um, base stations, because it keeps losing track in a little bit. So I'll just try and deal with that myself. Uh, track guide markers. Use these markers to help learn and guide you around the track. Start slowing down at the pink exclamation. I can see it over there. Aim for the apex, aim for the exit. That's actually quite a nice way of doing it. Use the track guide markers to guide you around the track. I quite like that. Rather than having a race in line. Yeah. Yeah, no, I like that a lot. Uh, so other issues with VR so far. So the controller issue isn't specifically a VR issue. I'm obviously also not listening to this guy at all. So I can see this guy's subtitles and I'm assuming you guys can as well. The cutscene subtitles though, don't get shown in VR, but you do see them on screen. So that's a little bit weird. Uh, the loading screens for the game, oops. The loading screens for the game show on the desktop, obviously, so you get a control uh, screen, which just shows you the Xbox controller and, uh, whoop, careful, and um, the various controls. And when it's finished loading, it then has a press A to continue prompt. You don't see that in VR, so you have to be looking at your monitor to know what it needs you to do. Or I know going forward now that it wants me, ooh, to press, uh, press A, but you, d you don't know otherwise, so that's a little bit confusing as well. They have one of the things they've done is they've added in uh, like a home, so rather than just being in nothingness, in a blank void with a menu hanging in front of you, you now have a home around you and a menu hanging in front of you. Still, it's just a floating menu screen, unfortunately. Um, but at least there is something around you. The bad side to that is that it runs very badly. Uh, it was very, very stuttery when I was in it uh, about half an hour ago. <laughs> so I should also say that this is uh, essentially an early access version of the game. I'm sure this is actually the release version, but it is early access. The game actually launches in three days unless you're a Muppet like me and you spend money on the deluxe edition, in which case you get three days early access. So I mentioned earlier, there's a bit of controversy around Project Cars as a sequel. So the reason for that is probably something you can see as is already. 
it's not very simulation focused. The original Project Cars and Project Cars 2 were both very uh, sim focused. They weren't quite full sim like a Sata Corso, but they're definitely leaning heavily towards the sim market. There are some issues with the physics and the control schemes and the such like, but we won't go into that. This game, despite being called Project Cars 3, is not sim focused. It is very much more arcade focused. I don't know exactly within the game and the career mode what form that will take, but in terms of the control and the much better controller um, support, because the original games had controller support, but it was never seen as being particularly fantastic. So it is, it's better in that regard, but it is very different. So there is there are a lot of people saying that perhaps this shouldn't have been a Project Cars game. It should have been Project Cars Horizon or something. It should have differentiated itself from the original uh, series because it's not quite the same sort of game. People have basically compared this to Shift and Shift 2, which was originally a Need for Speed spin-off and took that kind of, wasn't quite as arcade as Need for Speed, but it wasn't a sim either. It sort of sits a little bit in the middle. So there's a little bit of controversy there. Uh, it looks beautiful. It runs amazingly now that I'm in the game. I haven't changed any of the graphics options because I didn't have a chance. <laughs> I don't know if you could see, if you go back and, and look at when I'm the very beginning of the video, I couldn't even quit out. So when I couldn't control my car, I couldn't even quit out of the menu, quit out of the game. I had to alt tab out and then close it through windows because I couldn't even close it. Game looks very nice. I must say, I love this little car interior. I love the, is it because I'm clipping that headrest that it keeps going great for me? No, it just must be a tracking thing. I love the the rear cam. I love that. I think that looks awesome. Uh, the other thing I should say with the VR is it doesn't default to having a recenter VR button on the controller. So I had to set one of those myself when I was scrolling through the controls, remapping them all. So that's a little bit. If you're going to have VR, have that option. Uh, as you may have realized, I am using a controller rather than using a wheel. That is because normally I would, for a racing game in VR, go straight for the wheel. Welcome to the showroom. So I don't know if, it's, if that's as jerky for you as it is for me in the background there. Oh no, you can oh, you can just about see it. Mine's not as fuzzy as, as, as it is on the recording. I can see the, the background quite clearly. Um, but it is super jerky. Like, I mentioned before I don't get VR sickness, but if I did get VR sickness, this would throw me off the edge immediately. It looks horrible. Well, it looks very nice, but it stutters and runs so badly. It looks okay on the monitor from what I can see. So we have finished a race. We have now got three cars we can purchase. So this is again a difference between this and the previous games. In the previous games, it was a sim racer. You were given a contract for a company to, to run one of their cars in a certain race series. Now it looks a little bit more Gran Turismo Forza-ish, doesn't it? So we've got, how much money do we have? We have 30,000 credits. We've got the Toyota GT86. We have got the Mitsubishi Lancer. I do love an old school Lancer. And we've got a Honda Civic Type. I used to love the Honda Civics, but for some reason I've gone off them a fair bit. But um, I think we're going to go with the Lancer. I think we're definitely going to go with the Lancer. Yes, indeed. Uh, upgradable. Are they all upgradable? Yes, they are. And, oh, I see what they've done. They've got a front wheel drive, a rear wheel drive, and a four wheel drive. And the Mitsubishi is the second most expensive. Normally, I would... I would in lean towards the most expensive car on the assumption that it is the best car. But we'll just stick with with this for now. We'll buy the Mitsubishi Lancer. Perfect. Could I change the color? No idea. So this is my garage. Again, the super jerky in the background for me. You can upgrade and customize your collection of cars. Uh, I'm just going to skip. I, I'm understanding the, the principle. I get what they're going for. Uh, I have no saved styles. Okay. Create one by saving a custom setup as I... St oh, oh, I see. So if I say edit, so when it said, I'm losing this track in a little bit, it's winding up. So there's no actual car upgrades. It's, there are wheel tire upgrades where this, 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 this just all, yeah, this is all just um, cosmetic, isn't it? So we won't go into this too much. Does that color change? Did I change that color? Oh, I love that there are loads of colors. I don't know. Oh, there we go. Ooh. Ooh, yeah. I kind of like that for some reason. A matte metallic. Flip. That's the kind of dual colours, isn't it, I think. We'll just leave it at that for now. Have a quick look at patterns. So it seems like there are many, many customization options. That looks bloody awful. Let's have it. 
<laughs> it looks so bad. Look at that. Look at that. You're a terrible car. Um, we'll just leave everything else as it is for now. As I said, I am a little short on time, so I don't want to go... Oh, okay. Your chance to show your skills to Too in-depth with everything. I only have about 10 minutes left. I'll probably get one more race in before I have to stop this, unfortunately. Yeah, I mean... I'm going to skip a lot of this stuff because who cares? So yes, this... Yes, yes, yes. So this is, again, very different to Project Cars and Project Cars 2. I kind of like this system of progression, to be honest. This is why, like, Gran Turismo is my favourite ever... The first Gran Turismo was my favourite ever racing game. I played it to absolute death, including the massive, like, four-hour races as well. I, I love that game. So I like something like this with progression when you've got to buy new cars. Gran Turismo Forza, big fans of those games. I'm reading it and listening, but again, I'm just going to skip. So, a slightly confusing menu. What's going on here? So, we've got Shang... Or is that changing? Oh, I see. That on the left is changing as I'm moving around. Because it's head look, I can't really see what's on the left a lot of the time. Um, did I not just see one that was the UK? Why am I making that up? Must be making that up. Okay, let's... Oh, what's career... Oh, no, what's career goals? Just, yeah, okay, like... So I hit back... Oh, it just takes us here, so we can't actually get... And that's just slipping me through the same menu. I can't click on my name to get to anything at the moment. It just is what it is. So if we just go back to this, and then we say Shanghai Heights, that's fine. Let's do Shanghai Heights. Uh, take a quick look. Yep, 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 yep. Fine, fine, fine. So I finished the race is 1200 XP. Five clean overtakes within one second is 1200 XP. So really need to do that immediately. And then master three corners. So I'm quite liking that. That's quite nice. If I go into the garage... So again, it says upgradable, but if I click it and say customize, there isn't actually anything to upgrade, which is, that, that's confusing me a little bit. Don't know, that's just something they'll bring in later on. So if we just say race, let's just go for it, yep. I, it, oh, I mean, it is making me feel slightly uncomfortable, the jerkiness. It's, it's gone now. So I don't see, I'm looking on, the, on my desktop monitor now, and I can see that you've got a very nice loading bar, you've got the loading circle in the corner, you've got a beautiful background picture. I have a black square, or a black rectangle, in the Steam VR home location. Not home, whatever they want to call it. So it's, I have no idea what's going on. As a VR user, I am just oblivious right now. I'm just looking around at a lovely mountainscape in the, in the background and I've got a black rectangle and I have no idea what's going on. The loading times do also seem to be quite long, which I sort of hinted at before. I'd really rather they were a little quicker, but you know, if the game's good, the game's good. You're not going to be too fussed about that. But it takes so long and I don't want to cut these things in, the, in these sort of first quick look videos. I don't want to cut anything out. I want you guys to see exactly everything that's going on and if it takes this long to load it takes this long to load you need to be aware of that at least you get to look at something whilst it's uh, loading of course you can actually see that oh i'm right hand that's confused that's immediately confusing to me i think i need to reset my view slightly yes i do got a standard i'm pointing but i've got no hands we have a standard uh rear view mirror which i assume works but it isn't It'd be nice if it's kind of position orientated it's obviously just like a little essentially a screen for lack of a better word so the banners on the left are it's fairly low res. It's not maybe as high as you would like. Like I said, I can't actually get, and, and the tower there, whilst it's very nice changing color like that, it does look a little bit like a sort of early 2000s racing game, doesn't it? It's it's a little bit, a, a little bit crap. It's just a little bit crap. Um, so if I go to settings now, Oh, there are visuals. I never actually went that far across. I didn't realize you were really good. Oh, we'll leave all of that on. Uh, what can we actually change here? Very little. In fact, basically nothing. Oh, I like the fact they've got triple screen support. That's nice. But, uh, okay, maybe we'll have a look at that when we get back to some sort of menu. Uh, let's just hit, what, what does tune in do? Yep, 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 yep. 
So we have to buy a tune-in slot. We won't dig into it too much. We just want to see how the actual racing goes. I don't know if I like that the position indicators are inside my my dashboard. That's a bit weird. I do love the inside of this car. It's so old school. I don't know if I'd say it looks amazing. It's a little bit matte black, isn't it? I do have a map. I haven't really been looking at the map because it's a little bit out of the way, but I kind of like it being slightly out of the way. It means that I'm not focused on it in VR. It's not taking up massive parts of my screen. Maybe I need a few more uh, assists on, right? But yeah, I, I said earlier that with the first race that the game looked pretty good. I'm, I'm kind of changing my mind a little bit. I don't know if that's just because I haven't had a chance to look at the graphics options yet, but... It doesn't look amazing. It could certainly look better. You would have thought. Oh, it's even got a little temperature down there. That's quite a nice touch. Yeah, I wouldn't say I mastered that corner. Have I mastered any corners? Nah, of course I haven't. <laughs> I suppose you have to hit all three of those markers. See, look at that Audi in front of us. Look, it just doesn't look... It doesn't look great. It's the lighting, I think, more than anything. It's just kind of... dull. Everything looks a bit flat and matte and a bit lifeless, doesn't it? So I have been ripping on the game a little bit. I should say I am a massive fan of, of Slightly Mad Studios, the developers. I'm not massively fussed with the fact that they've changed the uh, the sort of format of the game. As I say, this is probably my preferred style of game. I think for their benefit, more than mine, they probably should have called it something different to differentiate. But Project Car 2 was my kind of go-to. If I wasn't recording and I wanted to do something in VR, Project Cars 2 was my go-to, is what I used to load up a little bit. So this would probably be the thing I would load up in the place of Project Cars 2, particularly when it's a little bit more uh, user-friendly, shall we say. I think it still is going to be quite, probably quite robust and oh, I definitely didn't break. And difficult to master. <laughs> yeah, look at that. Um, but it definitely has an a easier learning curve. Well, I say that, at least from what the devs have been saying. Oh, I did it. I mastered the three corners. Perfect. I thought I got that one. I don't know where the second one came from. So I don't think their master in the corners necessarily includes the speed your car's going at or the actual precise line it takes as long as you sort of hit the three, the three markers. So there's a little bit of pop down. Is that what you would use? Things disappearing quite abruptly in the rear view mirrors there. At least it has working mirrors. There are a lot of a lot of games, racing games, do tend to remove the rear view mirrors or at least give you the option by default to uh, have them off because they are a bit of a performance hit. All the cars have got speedometers in the dash. I don't really need the speedo over there. It does have the gearing indicator, which could be useful. Ah, could be useful if I go up to... Because I'm using automatic gearing at the moment rather than Fantastic. manual. <laughs> Can't think of the word for manual. So we did okay there. It looks like we finished pretty far ahead of all the other cars. I certainly can't see anything. Eight seconds I managed to get on there. Maybe I do need to turn the difficulty up because that's that's embarrassing for them. Uh, da, 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 da. Win, win, win. Yes, yes, yes. Good, good, good. Lovely little bit of XP, nom nom nom, and we've gone up a level. Good. And we get vehicle XP, that's interesting. I wonder if the vehicle XP determines what upgrades you can install then. Ah, so I do actually have a loading screen now. Yeah, the same ones that you do. I, I, I actually had a loading screen there, that was quite interesting. 
So it's automatically lined us up for another race. Oh no, but I have ran out of time really though, unfortunately. I says I'm still level one up there. Oh, oh that worked now. I tried that before, I clicked on it and it didn't work. So this is the uh, this is the first place that I saw. I'm just trying to look out the, yeah. It's nice and smooth in yours from what I can tell. Well, it does look like it's quite low frame rate, but in, in VR it's absolutely horrible. Absolutely horrible. Uh, they really need to fix that or just disable that background stuff completely because it's, yeah, horrible. So we've got all sorts of things we can do there. Accolades, customize the drivers. This will be the initial setup that I did, yes. So I'll just leave that as it is. Um, if I just keep hitting back, where do I go? Ah, I'm saying no. So is this maybe what I was looking for? So if we go into... Lost. I've lost VR. There we go. I think it's lost its tracking a little bit. If we go into settings here and say visuals. So am I mad? Oh, there we go. There we go. That's what I wanted. So I wonder if that refresh rate is what's locking, locking the VR in as well. What do I run at? I only run at 90, don't I? But there isn't a 90 option, rather frustratingly. So if I set that to 99, let's just try that. Window, no, tax ratio, yeah, low. So I will jump into... I'm just going to whack all of this up. Uh, V-Sync, no, I don't want V-Sync. Super sampling, I don't actually want super sampling. Reflections, ultra, is that? Yeah, that is high. Environment map, ultra, car detail, Ultra, track detail, ultra, shadow detail, ultra, mirror quality, high, motion blur, off, detailed grass, high, particle quality. Some of them cycle round and some of them don't. That just seems like a very weird design decision. Like how can we make it as confusing as possible for people? Render frames ahead will leave as it is, perfect. So that might then have a little bit of a difference on how everything looks, right? Shared memory? I don't think so. Protocol version, project cars one or two. <laughs> that seems odd. Yes, yeah, so I couldn't see those options uh, previously, could I? Gaze control, manual select, super sampling is that on there. Recenter, I'm going to recenter from the very start. In fact, yes to that. Camera near clip plane. I don't know what that means. Some sort of explanation would be very nice there. Right, so if we hit back, and then we're just going to go back into things to make sure that applied. Yes. So all I want to do is start the same race that I've already done, just to take a look at Shanghai and see if it looks any better. And we'll see if the loading screen works. No, it doesn't. I can see you've already got the loading screen on yours, haven't you? Ah, so it's a shame that there, yeah, there are some issues. As I said, this is a sort of early access is the wrong word because it's not an early access game. This is just... I have early access to the full version of the game, but there may well be a day one patch. There may well be an NVIDIA game driver coming out as well before the actual proper launch day on the 28th, I think it is. So this might not be entirely representative, but you'd have thought it would be pretty damn close. And I've I got to say I'm a little upset with the VR implementation and the general game start, I suppose. Definitely, definitely impacted by my issues with the controller, but then I can't see any reason that the game would have had those issues. It just seems like they've, they've used a slightly weird way of detecting your controller. If I only have one controller plugged into my PC, use that controller. I don't care what port it thinks it's on. Right. I don't know about you. Well, that... Oh no, okay, so I would say that the uh, banners on the left definitely are less pixelated, so that's made a difference there. The tower... I think there's more detail on the tower, isn't there? I think so. It still doesn't look amazing, but I think it looks better. It's a little hard to tell. I'll have to watch this back to be sure, I think, once I've uh, got the video up and edited. So if we just hit race, I'm not going to do the full... There we go, full race. I just want to have a look how it runs in-game. And also... Yeah, immediately the performance is significantly worse. I don't, you, don't know if you guys can see how much worse it's running. That could be because it's the game on the monitor is trying to run at 60 frames a second now. 
But yeah, no, that is running very badly indeed, actually. Like, relatively unplayable. It's definitely not good enough. You can see that the detail on the cars, though, is definitely better. There's definitely better lighting on them. The lights coming off the environment around, the reflections all look a lot better. So I'm definitely going to need to do some tweaking to make that work the way I would like it to. In the meantime, if we just pop back to the menu, which shouldn't take too long to load, and I can again see this loading screen. It's weird that there's a difference between the two. I just wanted to see if the... No, the interior may be slightly less... No, I don't think it is slightly less jerky at all. I think it is just as jerky. It's still horrible. All right, then. Cool. Well, I'm going to leave that there. That is probably just going to be a quick look, not an ongoing series. But if you would like to see more, obviously, do let me know down in the comments. I would love to play more. As I said, I'm a massive fan of racing games, although I don't feature many on the channel. I really enjoy them. This style of racing game is just right up my alley. Um, so just let me know down in the comments if you'd like to see more, because I'm happy to oblige. Otherwise, if you enjoyed the video, click the like button, comment, subscribe, all those good things. And I will hopefully see you next time, possibly in Project Cars 3, but definitely in some other magical VR adventure, if not. And as always, thank you very much for joining me.